Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is soak. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or the ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear soak used is to mean to make something or allow something to become thoroughly or completely wet by putting it in some liquid. Sometimes we will use this verb to describe a person who's taking a bath or sitting in a bathtub, uh, right? Their whole body is being uh, immersed in water. A second way you'll hear soak used is to mean to cause someone or, ca or cause something to become extremely wet. So with the second definition, sometimes you're going to hear people use it uh, in connection to being outside while it's raining. Um, and they might say or describe the rain is, is soaking them or soaking some other object that's been left outside. A third way you'll hear soaking used is to mean to have a liquid penetrate or permeate something completely. So let's go back to that example of rain and being outside. Perhaps you've had the experience of walking outside, walking through puddles, and the water comes through the shoe, your shoe, right? You can maybe feel your, your socks become wet. Again, we could use this verb to describe that. A fourth way you might encounter soak used is to mean to impose heavy charges on someone. Sometimes this gets used uh, in relation to taxes or making payments to uh, a government. This is not the most common way you'll hear this verb used, but you might, you might see it as well. You should know that soak is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, I'm going to add ing to form soaking. The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by adding ed. Our base verb, soak, k, k, ends in an unvoiced k sound. This means the ed ending is going to make a t sound, and we don't add an extra syllable as we say it. So it should sound like this. Soaked, soaked, okay? Now there are a number of phrasal verbs with soak, so we're gonna focus most of our discussion today on those uh, particular phrasal verbs. Let's start with soak in. This can have a couple different meanings. One would be to be immersed in some substance. So. Let's take a look at an example sentence. We will soak the beans in water overnight. So this is an example of a simple future sentence. Uh, here, someone is saying we're going to put beans in maybe a bowl or pot of water um, and, and kind of just let them sit in that substance overnight. A second way you'll hear soak in used is to immerse someone or something in a particular substance. Another example here. After a hard day of moving, she soaked in the tub for an hour. So here, um, now we're talking about some, someone, someone's body being in bath water. Okay. Uh, 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 yet another way to use soak in is to mean to become understood or to make some type of lasting memory. An example of this, the children soaked in a variety of information while visiting the museum. So um, this is a, a very vague sentence, right? You don't know what kind of museum, uh, but they might have been learning about a, a certain period of time, a certain group of people, right? But they're learning, understanding, and, and possibly making a long lasting memory. The last two examples, she soaked in the tub, the children soaked in, uh, are both simple past tense sentences. Uh, another phrasal verb you might encounter is to soak into. This is going to be to seep. So we think of like water flowing into some particular place, penetrating or even absorbing. An example of this, the floodwaters soaked 
into the carpet. So um, you might be able to kind of imagine now we have this kind of very wet carpet that's that's left from a flood. Soaked into the carpet is another simple past tense sentence. The next phrasal verb we'll discuss is to soak off. This is used when um, we are, again, going to put something in liquid in hopes that something else is going to be removed um, that maybe had been previously attached. So sometimes uh, getting something really wet can help kind of loosen something, uh, like in my example here, can I soak off these fake nails? So some people will um, wear acrylic nails um, and there's a particular glue that's used. And so sometimes people will put their hands in uh, a particular liquid of a kind uh, to be able to get that glue to loosen. And then one is able to remove the nails. Okay, now let's keep looking. Another phrasal verb you might see is soak out. An example, or, or the meaning here first, is to draw something out of another thing, uh, usually by immersing it in uh, a substance. An example of this. Can you soak out grass, can you soak grass stains out of soccer shorts and socks? So this might be a, a question where someone is asking, are we able to do, to do this, right? We can see that modal can there. Um, they might be asking sort of what kind of liquid or what kind of substances could I use in order to sort of pull out those grass stains, those greenish stains that have formed from um, probably uh, slide tackling, be, coming in contact with grass. Another phrasal verb you might encounter is to soak through. This just means that you are getting something completely or thoroughly wet. An example here, my clothes are soaked through. Okay. This is a passive voice sentence uh, in case you're looking at it. Um, I can see uh, the present form of be um, and then uh, I've got my participle for a uh, participle form of the verb here so this would be a uh, simple present uh, but in passive voice the next phrasal verb we'll discuss is to soak up this can have a couple different meanings one would be to absorb or gather liquid an example of this these towels will soak up the spilled juice so here uh, we're talking about absorbing it, drawing the liquid into the towels. A second way you'll hear soak up used is to mean to absorb or take in um, all of something or as much of something as possible. I've got two example sentences here to help us understand this. Um, something you might hear someone say, we're going to soak up the sun during our vacation. This is another simple future sentence, but this one is with be going to, right? And so what they're saying, we're going to spend a lot of time out in the sun. We're going to be absorbing all the sunshine we possibly can. A second example sentence for this second definition of soak up, I always soak up my mentor's advice. Here, uh, I might be saying I'm trying to take in all the wisdom, all the information that is being shared with me. I always soak up is an example of the simple present, but this time it's in the active voice. The last phrasal verb we're going to discuss today is to soak with. Again, we're describing drenching something, coating something with a particular liquid. And that liquid is, is going to follow our preposition with. An example here, airport workers are soaking the plane's wings with de-icer. So here's an example of the present progressive or present continuous. Uh, I might be describing something that's happening right now. Uh, maybe you've seen this happen um, if you've flown during the winter months, uh, particularly when it's cold, when there's a lot of snow and ice. Um, but it's a particular liquid uh, generally used on the wings of the plane um, to help it sort of take off uh, in, a, in a safe way. The 
Next thing we're going to do is discuss some related words. The first word we'll discuss is the noun form of this word. So same spelling, same pronunciation. When I use the noun soak, I'm generally referring to the act of putting someone or something in liquid for some period of time. An example of this might be, some people relax after a hard day with a soak. So again, that idea of sitting in a, in a bathtub, hot water, maybe bubbles, something else uh, to can make people feel good or just make them feel a little more relaxed. You'll also hear soaking used as an adjective. Generally, when people use this as, as an adjective, they're talking about something being extremely wet. An example of this, take off that soaking jacket. I okay. feel like this is something I've heard various parents say to their kids. Uh, maybe they don't want the water dripping all over the house or they're worried about someone getting cold because of, of just how thoroughly and completely wet uh, that uh, piece of clothing is. The last word we'll look at today is the adverb soakingly. So generally we're describing something um, being done in a manner that's going to make someone wet. An example here, um, it, it's a shirt soakingly hot in this re region. It's shirt soakingly hot in this region, pardon. So uh, I saw a sentence describing a particular tropical location um, and what it's saying is it's so hot, you're gonna sweat so much, your shirt it's going to feel like you've been out in the rain. It's, it's going to be so wet. So here, shirt soakingly is modifying or describing the adjective hot. And our adverbs can absolutely be used to describe adjectives. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.